السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الحمد للہ نحمده ونستعینه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم من يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل العقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I'm grateful to be here with you once again to reflect on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the beautiful attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will discuss today is Al-Hadi. And Al-Hadi means the guide. The root word of Hadi is Hadalia. The Arabic word Hidaya, which means guidance, also shares the same root word. Al-Hadi is also like another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we discussed previously, and that is Al-Nur, the light. So Al-Hadi and Al-Nur are similar in the way that the light shows the way in darkness and a guide shows the way when there's a lack of understanding. So let's start with a simple example to understand the word guidance. It's probably safe for me to say that if you're at least 15 years of age or older, you have a smartphone. Doesn't matter what smartphone you have, you have a smartphone. And if I don't know anything about smartphones and I come to you asking, uh, why should I get a smartphone? You would tell me that a smartphone would let me stay in touch with people. Um, it might also help me find new people through new apps and things like that. You might also tell me that I will never be lost again because of the GPS feature on the smartphone. The GPS feature will give me turn-by-turn direction, whether I'm driving, I'm walking, or cycling, or even taking public transportation in a city uh, anywhere in the country or in a major city in the world. So that would be amazing. You might also tell me that I will never forget to do anything again in my life because of a smartphone, because it has reminders. I can also set a precise time and location when I want to be reminded about something. Or, you know, even better, you might also tell me that I will never miss waking up at the time when I want to wake up every single day because of this smartphone. I can set an alarm and that alarm can have multiple alarms and it can be for any time of the day. So it'd be like, I've never missed Fajr Salah ever again, or <laughs> not wake up on time for Sahur. <clears throat> so, you know, you said all these fantastic things to me and you could go on and on and on about the many uses of a smartphone. But let's just say that I am convinced I need to get a smartphone <clears throat> because it will change my life for the better. So you, as a messenger of the smartphone revolution, you are now successful. I'm a smartphone convert. I will never be lost again. I will never be forgetful. I will never miss an appointment. And because of all of those things, I'm convinced. And because I'm convinced that I can't live without a smartphone, I now have to have one. And you will tell me, okay, go to the store, buy this model uh, made by a so-and-so company because it is the best smartphone in the world uh, to change my life with. Fabulous, great. So now I have the best smartphone in my hand. I've gone to the store, I bought this smartphone, I have it in my hand. I also have the user manual that came with the smartphone. But you know what? I, have, I don't feel like I've, it's changed my life yet because I don't know how to use this smartphone. And the user manual only talks about the different features of the smartphone. And somebody had to have write that user, written that user manual. Somebody had to have communicated all of those words to be written down. And that's great for the user manual but it doesn't help me with my problems that I want to solve with the best smartphone in the world. So how do I really put the smartphone to use for my needs? And this is where I need guidance from the smartphone converts, the people who practice the smartphone. But wait, I don't want just any smartphone practitioner because I was convinced that I need guidance from the best smartphone uh, or the practitioners of the best smartphone. And, and that's what I really need. I need those practitioners. 
I need those practitioners to show me how to solve all my problems that is specific to me because I want to be able to use this phone for my needs. So I need somebody who is a practitioner to guide me to solve these problems, listen to me. And what if I have a problem that this one practitioner couldn't solve? Now I need to extend that to, to have a, a community of smartphone practitioners. I need to connect to these community members to go in and learn from them and solve very specific problems and challenges that I might have. So you can probably see where this is going with this example. You know, just having the best thing in the world uh, in our possession is not enough. Being told about the best thing in the world uh, didn't help me or us get better either. We have to learn. We have to put that to use. Okay, so we must understand what it is. We must continue practicing this knowledge in order to become proficient ourselves. So let's let's dig deeper into the word guidance. And this time, let's look at the word guidance from the lens of our faith, our deen. So there are many types of guidance that we know of. We know there's basic guidance that all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receive. For example, a baby cow knows after birth to look for its mother and reach for her udders to drink milk to stay alive and grow stronger. Uh, or let's even consider the honeybee. The honeybees build their homes or their hives in the shape of a hexagon. Nobody taught how to build that shape to a honeybee in that hexagon shape. And, and we know from our study of the shape of hexagon that they, it is one of the, it's one of the best shapes to maximize small spaces. So to store honey in this small area, the hexagon shape is something that the honeybees use. And this is, there's also guidance that comes to us uh, from those who are divinely guided. So think about the people we call uh, pe the people who are prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who carried this message and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implemented these guidances in their own lives. And then they become examples for us to follow. And there's also uh, guidance that comes to us in the way of divine inspiration. So think about moments when you're under pressure or we're being tested. You know, we might have, for example, uh, an opportunity that will solve a serious financial problem for us, but our heart might tell us, you know what, this is, this is probably not a good choice. And these are only but a few different ways in which we receive guidance or we have awareness about guidance. And as Muslims, we believe that all guidance that is good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran is a source of guidance for all of mankind, not just Muslims. And Muslims study the Quran because it is the pristine word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is the book that was revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is, in essence, our user manual on how to live in this world. How do we know that the Quran is a source of guidance for us? So in Surah Al-Isra, we'll, we'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the Haza Quran, Yahdi Lilati Akwamu, you wa Yubashirul Mu'minin. Surely this Quran guides to what is most upright and gives good news to the believers. So let's try and understand the words most upright and believers. What should we understand the word most upright to mean? So we should understand it to mean that this is the standard by which we are tested in this world, and the standard by which actions are treated as either right or wrong the standard by which we measure success and failure. So therefore, we should consider the Quran to contain the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its contents, the standards by which we should judge not just our actions, but the actions of our communities that we live in and the places where we uh, are part of. So in the world we live in, however, you know, it is our ego that wants to define the standards against which we measure right and wrong or against which we measure success and failure, or even greatness and mediocrity. And there's no shortage of these examples. You know, we know this from our own personal lived experiences. You know, as an exercise, you know, we can look at social media to quickly find people who call themselves influencers, who place strong emphasis on the individual and their predispositions. That is a manifestation of our ego. And our ego is always looking to be acknowledged and always looking to be fed. Think about the, you know, how excited you get when you see the number of likes grow or when you see the number of people resharing your posts, whatever medium that might be in. And think about the children. You know, think about children when they get bored. Their ego is not trained to be patient. So very quickly they want to go to devices, they want to go to other things, or they'll start 
causing a ruckus because their ego hasn't been trained for patience. And the same is also true for adults. Uh, you know, for adults, our nafs or our ego makes decisions for us sometimes when um, it's not trained to be patient. Think about phrases like, for example, um, you only live once or YOLO. You know, or phrases like be your authentic self in the absence of any context whatsoever. What, are, what is the guidance that we actually give our fellow human beings uh, or our children when we say such phrases? You know, language is power. It is how we shape our mind, how we shape our ideas. Uh, the thought, the language we speak will also drive the kind of ideas that enter our mind. So, you know, with, without context, without ever teaching properly, do we want those kinds of ideas in the minds of our youth? So the quality of guidance we want for our communities is also important. You know, where is the measure from right and wrong coming for us, not just as individuals, but also as community? The idea that we should uh, act in a way that is pleasing to us and us alone and not care about the wider society actually damages our society, damages the places that we live. Not to mention it damages us too. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hadi, is helping us by giving us guidance, helping us know the difference between what is good, what is not, what is successful and what is not. And what about the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls in that, in that ayah? What is the good news that is being given to the believers? So the believers are people who have submitted their will uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've committed, they've committed their lives to conform to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by submitting their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believers are setting aside their ego in favor for of the standard measures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. So in other words, the believer is a Muslim. Uh, the literal meaning of the word Islam is submitting. So the word Muslim in Arabic is referred to, is used to refer to people who have embraced Islam. So therefore it means someone who has surrendered themselves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Surah Al-Qasas, for example, Allah tells us, وَمَنْ أَذَلُّ مِمَّنِ اتَّبَعَ حَوَاهُ بِغَيْرِ هُدَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ هُدَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ And who could be more astray than those who follow their desires with no guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? SubhanAllah. Allah is asking us a question, you know, a pointed question to all of humankind. How can we think that we are right if we don't have guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So are, are we, you know, is Allah, is Allah just saying, okay, uh, go run with your nafs? You know, we, we don't, even when we choose to become Muslim, it is by Allah's will. It is for our benefit. So Allah is actually gracing us with his mercy when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards practicing Islam. And not just benefiting us when we fully embrace islam we are then in return benefiting our communities so submitting ourselves to the guidance of allah is to recognize that surrendering ourselves to the greatest truth by which we can live our lives is the best thing for us and for our communities it gives the way to measure our actions against the guidance of that which is right and wrong given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know it 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 helps us learn if we're acting in the best ways possible and then constantly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance is how we can make sure that our actions seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah nahl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us fa inna llahi yahdi fa inna llahi la yahdi may yudillu Allah certainly does not guide those he leaves astray and who are those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray they are those who have rejected guidance after having received it. Let's consider that for a minute. After having received it. Everything in this universe is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at minimum receives some form of basic guidance. And there is no creation that can say they have never been guided. You know, we talked about the example of the, uh, the cow, the baby cow, the calf earlier on. We also talked about... Um, you know, uh, honeybees and the hexagon combs. Nobody taught them. Let's take another example in that same vein. The salmon fish. 
When the salmon fish spawns, it swims downstream to the ocean. Nobody tells the salmon, go swim to the ocean. This is guidance that it has received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it just knows that it has to make this journey. And when the salmon is old enough and ready to reproduce, it will make its way back upstream to its birthplace. It will find a way, not the same way usually, but it will find a way to swim upstream, lay eggs for the next generation of salmon, and then die. How does salmon know to return to its birthplace? How does it know which way to take to get to the destination where it was born? So the ability of the salmon to find its birthplace after spawning is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single salmon has it. And it is similar for humankind. You know, we each have a whisper inside of us that tells us there is a creator. It takes great effort and consciousness on our part to reject the belief in one God. Okay, think about that for a minute. It takes effort from us to reject the existence of God, that there's a creator who created the universe and everything that is within him. And similarly, if you think about the creations of day and night, both of these were created from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are good things in the daytime and there are good things in the nighttime. However, we know that the night has certain dangers for us that will cause us harm. And there are creatures and people sometimes intending on causing harm who will use the cover of night. And this is basic guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us. Not that day uh, or night are good and evil or right or wrong. We just know that the cover of night uh, is used as shelter by creatures who prey on other creatures, including people. So for people, how does our heart incline towards Islam? And this too is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides who he wills. The prophets who carried the message of Allah were only tasked to deliver the message. They were divinely guided, living their lives in accordance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the lives of the prophets are also a source of guidance for us, with the best of them being the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if I go back to the smartphone example I was using earlier, you know, Allah gave all of humanity written guidance in the form of the Qur'an. And then Allah sent us prophets who were living examples of the guidance and who lived their lives following the best guide of all, and that is al-Hadi. So the idolaters used to say that Allah has guided them to polytheism because had Allah wanted, he could have guided them and their forefathers towards him. And this, of course, is not true. Astaghfirullah. You know, Allah sent many messengers across many communities going back to Nuh alayhi salam and the early children of Adam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebukes the idol worshippers in Surah Al-Anbiya by telling us, we never sent a messenger before you, O Prophet, without revealing to him, there is no God worthy of worship except me, so worship me alone. So from the Quran, we learned that all the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were asked to only deliver the message from Allah, nothing more. In Surah Yasin, we can find the messengers of Allah saying to their people, and our duty is only to deliver the message clearly. And what is this message? There is only one God, and He alone is worthy of worship. The Day of Judgment, my dear brothers and sisters, is the final test for all of us. On that day, there will be two groups of people, broadly speaking. The first group are those who believed in one God, in one Allah, in the great, in the fullest sense and met the demands of holding on to that belief, followed, following his guidance. And the second group of people are going to be those non-believers and hypocrites who choose to follow their ego and everything else that went against what is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran calls all of humanity to accept the oneness of God and to follow the standard which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has called the most upright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and give us wisdom that give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it most. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, as with every attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must learn how to apply it to our own lives. And as I was reflecting on this name, 
you know, I thought of three ways in which we can learn to seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we may strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first way we can do this is by seeking knowledge. It was narrated by Anas bin Malik that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, seeking knowledge is a duty upon every Muslim. So not just secular knowledge, but also religious knowledge. And doing this is an effective way to embody the attribute of al-Hadi because when we have knowledge, we will be able to guide with the perspective of the knowledge itself and the wisdom that comes with it, but also with the perspective of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more we learn, the more we can make informed decisions before we act. And knowledge is power. Knowledge gives us the ability to see the world in new ways uh, than we could before. The second way in which we can apply this is to perform istikhara. Uh, now, there's a special prayer that was taught to us by Prophet ﷺ called Salatul Istikhara. And this salah has two rakat that can be performed in, in our homes, in the mosque, or anywhere where it's permissible to pray. And this is a special prayer. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance in making a decision that is neither obligatory nor forbidden. So, for example, if you intend to marry someone or if you're about to make a a financial decision that will impact you for a while, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help in making the decision is a way for us to seek divine guidance. And this practice alone helps us strengthens our trust, strengthen our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps us make better decisions over time because by being intentional in seeking the pleasure and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before every action we take, we are conforming ourselves to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're telling, we're training our nafs to follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, we should live by the Quran and Sunnah. So to truly benefit from Allah's guidance, we must strive to live by the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran is the word of God and the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the lived example of the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was narrated by Abu Musa that our Prophet Sallallahu said, the example of a believer who recites the Quran and acts on it is like a citron which tastes nice and smells nice. A citron is a shrub-like tree that bears large fruit like lemons. Uh, and the hadith continues, and the example of a believer who does not recite the Quran but acts on it is like a date which tastes good but has no smell. And it's not too late for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to start today and act on the Quran and Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us guidance and keep us on the path that will lead us all to genital fiddles. I mean, Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with pious spouses and offspring who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. I ask Allah to forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and those from our descendants to keep up in prayer. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, our parents and the believers on the day of judgment when the judgment will come to pass. Rabbana hablana min izwajina wa zuriyatina kurata ayyuni wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tuwafana ma'al abrar. Rabbi jalni mukimu salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbana utakabal dua. Rabbana aghfir li wa li walidiya wa lil mu'mina yawma yikumu nisab. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا منا لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا آمنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لا لكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين اللهم